Why don't developers know the basic practices for technical SEO? Why does SEO matter for us developers? Why don't developers follow the documented best practices? Why can't SEOs give us technical guidance? Hello and welcome everybody to a new episode of SEOs and Developers. My guest today is Ruth Mesfan, and she is a software engineer at Zillow based on the East Coast of the US. And uh, I saw her as a public speaker and I'm really, really excited to talk a little bit about her experience with the SEO world from a developer's perspective. Ruth is also the owner of a super cool, one of a kind painting that lives on the wall of her apartment. Hi, I'm with Martin Schwitt, who works as a developer advocate in search relations for Google. Uh, he lives in Switzerland and he has a big personality and loves to dive. Ruth, I'm super excited to have you here. Uh, I saw you at a, I think it was React Next Summit, where you gave a talk on SEO for developers. And uh, specifically, I think you focused on React.js. Was that right? Yeah, um, uh, in regards to mobile first indexing, yeah. Right, yes. That was super, super cool. And I was so elated when I saw that because I see so very few non-SEO people talk about SEO, especially in developer circles. So it was very refreshing to see you do that. And what was what was the experience you had giving that talk? Like, did a bunch of people say like, "Ooh, I didn't know that," and that was interesting and exciting, or were you met with like suspicion, or what happened? Like, did you get any feedback on that? Yeah, uh, I didn't have any feedback in regards to suspicion. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of feedback was mainly it was like, "Oh, I didn't know it was that easy." <laughs> like, "Oh, I already know." this stuff kind of thing, but mm. they didn't realize that it actually connected with SEO. Um, so it was great to essentially like build a bridge, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense because this is exactly why this video series exists, because I think this bridge needs to be built and it hasn't been built not only specifically to specific topics like mobile first indexing or client side rendering, server side rendering, all that kind of stuff. But I think also in general, like between our two professions or like the two sides of the coin, one being uh, SEO and the other one being development or engineering, um, there isn't as much of a bridge. I breached into this space in 2018 when I joined Google and it was tricky to, to even get developers interested in SEO. So what got you interested in SEO? Uh, it was actually really funny. So um, at a uh, uh, previous job I was in, we were hearing about this mobile first indexing, but didn't really get into it. We we're like, OK, whatever. And we had other projects to do until someone uh, said, wait, I think that mobile first indexing or mobile first is going to mess up our index ranking because we don't do mobile first and we have like a separate page for mobile. And so when we were looking into it, we were like, oh my God, yes. And then at the time, Google's deadline was September and it was already end of July. And we we're like, ah, <laughs> we got to get this done. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. that was the reason why, especially since uh, where I was working was like a marketplace essentially. So we were, we didn't realize how heavily reliant we were on Google searches. Uh, so yeah, our users would search for us on Google and most of the time, and that's how they got to our site. We thought that it was just like word of mouth or I don't actually, honestly, I didn't even think about how they came to our site. So yeah, and then having like a big change in, in the way that, that Google and other search engines work then probably is like, becomes a surprise priority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely a surprise priority for our team. <laughs> and I mean, I've, I've worked as a developer for over a decade at this point, and um, I've, I've experienced that where like out of the blue, someone from the marketing department comes in and say like, we have an SEO problem that we need to fix. And then 
oftentimes they have a really hard time even formulating it. So the fact that you started with knowing that you were looking for mobile first indexing is already very nice because oftentimes it's just like, we have an SEO problem. It's like, what is it? Like, we don't know, but we have an SEO problem. It's like, oh, great. Um, and and then you have to like figure out you you figure you need to figure out what you don't know right it's, it's like how do I search for we have an SEO problem like how am I going to get a meaningful search query for this but where did you then take to or like what kind of resources did you look to in in terms of figuring out what you need to do and what is like the supposed best practice and what's the solution to the challenge you were facing how did you go about this journey of figuring out what you need to do next. Yeah, so I really like front end in general. So mm. uh, I naturally gravitated to, oh, you know, I'll do research on SEO for my team and be one of the experts. A I'm going to put in quotation experts because uh, mm, there's, yeah. there's no way I'm an expert at SEO, SEO. but uh, to ha be well informed to explain it to my team and whatnot. And uh, honestly, the webmasters videos like I watched almost all of Google's SEO videos. <laughs> that you oh, guys wow. Saw. Yeah, because I was like, all right, well, they're the ones who are setting this whole mobile first indexing thing. So <laughs> they must be like the experts if they're the ones doing it. And so I watched the videos, which was great. So even like y'all's like quarterly or I think it used to be monthly videos of like what's going on and what's the updates, mm. I'd watch those. And then um, all the best practices that you Google put for mobile first as well. I, I read those up um, and also had like a couple of resources in regards to um, the difference between desktop first versus mobile first, because I think a couple of the rules or guidance guidelines changed a little bit because it was mobile first now. Um, so yeah, but honestly, I just went straight to Google for everything mm. um, because since you were the, well, not you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, it wasn't yeah, me. It was, but since Google was the one who was stating that they were going to make it mobile first indexing only, I figured they were the most expert in SEO for what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, it's it's very flattering to hear that you watched all the videos and you probably are a fan of Google search news at this point. Uh, John is going to be really excited about that as well. But it, it's quite interesting that you went straight to, well, the source as far as, as it goes there, because a bunch of people are not. And especially developers oftentimes are like, ah, how hard can this be? We don't really need to like do any research. We'll just like fudge our way through it. So it's really, really cool to hear that you you went with that. And did you have any experience of like looking at third party sources that said other things? Or did we have any holes where you're like, uh, there's information missing? There was, um, that's actually the main reason why, honestly, I went straight to the source. Like, it's boring as that might sound of like, oh, go to like, if you literally Google mobile first indexing and you find like webmasters, go doc, Google, doc, and click that. Um, the reason why was because there was a lot of misinformation with third party. So for instance, I had a product manager who came up and was like, oh no, we can't do accordions or this or this or this because that's going to hide the data and it's not going to show. And, I, and I, I didn't read that on the mobile first indexing. Are you, that doesn't make sense. Oh, I saw it on this article. So I read the article and I was like, well, this article seems like it's a couple of years old. <laughs> And this looks like they are talking about desktop and not mobile first. So this might be out of date. And just like, and I think some are, some people ran with that article essentially and wrote their own articles of what the complications of mobile first. And I was like, no, it's, you can still, they're trying to make sure that they're more forgiving because it's mobile first. And there's like such a compact uh, screen now that it doesn't make sense that they're going to say no uh, accordions, no this. It's more of like, oh, like as long as you're doing server side renderings, is populating data, like 
all this stuff. Like it's more forgiving because it's mobile first. Um, and so looking through and going back to the source, which was Google, I was able to uh, tell them like debunk that that statement or uh, or that resource essentially. Yeah. But that's that's really really nice because oftentimes information used to be correct and then things change or people looked at one specific aspect and then generalized that too much that that does happen that happens all the time that happens in development too where people are like you cannot test i don't know angular code and it's like well, actually you can you just have to know how um and yeah i don't know it's it's good to hear that that we could debunk some of that stuff that's that's nice but to be honest i would just wish because if you if you think about it and if you look at what you discovered and what people have said it's like it's a lot of it there are some aspects that are kind of rocket science but like a bunch of it is relatively easy to grasp concepts and and best practices and yet most developers don't really pay attention to it or don't care about seo do you have any idea where that could come from like why don't they just know these things because i think all of us know how to make a link a semantic link and what semantic html is supposed to look like and what the latest javascript feature is and where it's useful and how it works and what's the syntax for it but these kind of basic concepts seem to be missing in the developer yeah. world so a couple of things um i think there's like two or three points in regards to that so um one I don't think every essentially developer knows about JavaScript and like semantics and structure Fair. data and whatnot. Fair. Uh, mm -hmm. I would assume that most or if not all front end engineers should, but not all software developers. Fair uh, enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and then the second thing is I Honestly, I didn't realize the importance of SEO until um, we completed our, our like SEO project to be mobile first. And then our product manager and the market, actually the marketing team sent it to our product manager and the product manager told us like, oh, we had a huge increase of views on our site and which converted into like an increase in sales or um, revenue. And they're like, well, if and when they showed us like the graph, it literally made it a nice incline <laughs> right at the time. Yeah, right at the time we shipped our our um, our project, essentially, um, and or turned on the feature flag. Uh, so it was used and we're like, oh, this is important. <laughs> And I don't think it's, yeah, it was great. Um, and I don't think it was just because of the SEO, to be honest. I think a lot of the things we did was pr uh, made our pages more performant, uh, made it more user-friendly, um, made it more accessible. And those are actually the like big three items or key items when it comes to SEO and mobile-first indexing. Exactly. Like you... You shouldn't, and, and this is, there's like two things that I want to tag on to. One is, it's very interesting you say that like, oh yeah, these, like we, we didn't just do things for SEO purposes, we did things for the user and that was rewarded in search engines, which is exactly what we want. Like a search engine tries to, to find the best possible experience and the best possible answer to a query from a user and, and present sites that are good for the user to, to fulfill whatever intention they had with the query they entered into the search engine. So making it better for the user is usually also equal to making it better for search engines. And the other thing is, did was that the, like the first time this kind of information, like, hey, here's the thing you did, here's the impact, was that the first kind of, of opportunity where, where they brought back impact information to the changes you made? Or is that something that only sales normally does? Like, oh, you've deployed this new feature, and it has got, gotten us this amount of customers that we didn't have, or like this amount of revenue that we didn't have before. Or did does that happen more often? Or does it happen more often, but not with SEO? Like, do you usually get to see the impact of your work? 
Yeah, so for all of our projects, we always get to see the impact afterwards. Uh, it's not rewarding if we don't, at least for me, it's not rewarding. <laughs> 100% percent agree, 100% percent <laughs> agree. Yeah. Regardless of if this revenue or like use, ease of use uh, because of that feature or, or increase of review ratings or, or whatnot. Um, but for the SEO one, like honestly, I did not expect I from I don't know why I didn't think of it, <laughs> but I honestly didn't expect that we were going to get like a result so quickly or any real result. I just thought, oh, this is going to help with SEO. That's going to increase traffic eventually. So or at the minimum case, keep it at the same, which was actually our goal was like, let's not deprecate <laughs> or decrease our index rating was like our actual goal. So the the fact that it not only like we like not only kept it or we not only we didn't get it deprecated or like decrease our ranking like it looked like it it had like a positive effect yeah in in regards to our users so nice and to be honest, I'm not blaming you for not expecting or anticipating that, but it's something that I find interesting. So like the the SEO team doesn't usually like or, or let me let me rephrase the question. How often before did the SEO team interact with the engineering side of things? Uh not that much. Not that much. <laughs> mm, no. Okay, that's interesting. That seems to be like the underlying systemic issue between developers and SEOs that there is like this weird gap and there is not that much collaboration or information sharing. And that's really, really unfortunate because oftentimes SEOs tell me that they are kind of fighting the development and uh, team like, oh, they, they want to roll out this thing and they screw us up and then we have to clean up after them for like a month. And I'm like, but did you talk to them beforehand? Well, they didn't talk to us beforehand. And I'm like, ah, so no one wants to talk to anyone at any capacity or time, which is like super unfortunate. And I, I feel like this is close to the root cause of the issue where developers don't care that much about uh, SEO or don't even know about SEO, right? I think that it's mostly of a combination of the developers don't know about SEO or and a like don't understand the value or the importance and then i would also say there's a third thing of like not realizing how easy to do the either seo practices or run through if like the feature you're building or mm. developing might be performant or like not performant which would right. actually cause a decrease in right. seo and a decrease in performance in your site which is not good uh, <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> so I think those are the combinations. Uh, True. If, I, if it's something that deals with, in my opinion, um, if it's something that deals with main pages on the site that is going to be uh, searchable on Google, right, then that's something that should, like, during the roadmap or um, design doc or, or PRD, like, the SEO person, SEO manager or expert should come in and uh, look into it and give their feedback on it. Um, just so, cause it's just so hard as a developer that you build this feature and then you come, you have to come back to fix it. Is you want to hopefully be able to complete the first iteration of it <laughs> before <laughs> having to fix bugs, ideally. And then I think the second thing is in regards to it is there's like a couple of tools that developers can actually utilize um, to see if it's if that feature is going to be performant or, or not, or at least use it while you're building uh, this feature. And then eventually you'll like develop a muscle where you could kind of feel if this is going to be like a performant feature. So Lighthouse was super useful on that. Um, the web platform team built uh, 
a, a script around Lighthouse. So whenever you built like a feature and it has like a feature flag, you can run the script like 500 times with that feature flag on or off and off to see the difference of performance between the what's already on prod versus what you're going to push through essentially or uh, yeah. And so we're able to see, oh, this is like, this is going to make it, which is always the happy past scenario. This is going to make things better. <laughs> like, like LCP is lower. This is great. <laughs> It's true, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's important to integrate that in your workflow as a developer so that it kind of becomes a natural part of your work and you see the impact um, as often as possible, right? Or, uh, yeah, exactly. Or um, there's, I forgot what it's called. I think it's called bundle phobia. So whenever introducing new packages or if someone's like, oh, I love this package like of like uh, a group, a graph package, for instance, of building graphs or whatnot, I always go to Bundlepedia or Bundlephobia to see how large the package size is. Because if it's yeah. too large, right, even if it is a great package, like that's going to actually decrease our performance and will decrease and it will increase load and it won't give a great user experience, which can also mess with our with our index rating or SEO score. Um, and it's like, is it worth that? Yeah, and it's, this it's a, is that's a little rocket science. Yeah. yeah. I like that. And I, I think like rocket science in this case is actually a very apt comparison because in rocket science, you have this issue that you want more thrust, so you need to add more fuel, but more fuel means more weight and more weight need, means you need more thrust. And then there's like this sweet spot where adding more fuel actually gives you more thrust and not so much weight that it's like offsetting negatively, but eventually just adding fuel just means that the 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 thrust you gain from the extra fuel is not as big as it needs to be to actually offset the the fuel that you added and then you get get negative in, increase or a negative be, uh, benefit from it and you actually lose performance and it's similar to to that with packages it's like oh we need graphs and then you're like oh okay shit we need a thing to make graphs now um so there's this one package a and then there's the other package b both of them allow us to make graphs but one adds so much more weight to the page that needs to go through the wire and only adds this little feature of graphs where the other one is smaller and also adds this little feature. So you should go for that one. But that's the, the smaller one, package B, that is smaller, does not necessarily make it easier for developers. Like the other one might be the more comfortable for developers and then developers gravitate towards the wrong choice. Yeah, that's actually what happened with us. It was like, we saw this pa package A had all the bells and whistles. Package A was also 10 times <laughs> the size and web platform was like, no, we're not, we're not doing this. <laughs> and then we did package B, it was still a little large, um, but not as large as package A. And we like, we're like, eh, performance still, like we weren't feeling comfortable. So then we just like, built the graph ourselves because it was a bar graph. We we're like, oh, it's just a bar graph. We don't need all of this. Um, and no package means lighter. So this is great. <laughs> yes, good performance culture right there because I felt I fell into this trap so many times. It was like, ooh, but this library is really nice and it makes everything go so fast and easy. But then you see like, oh, but it's actually dragging down our performance. And if unless there's a performance culture where someone keeps you accountable for that, it kind of just happens. And then the website just grows and bloats. And uh. so that's really cool. That's that's really nice. You said something about low hanging fruit that you didn't know about. Is that something that you would have hoped for or expected the SEO team to reach out to you that they like, because they probably knew about these low hanging fruit, but they didn't necessarily communicate them or maybe they didn't know about them. Would you want SEO teams to be more proactive when it comes to like, oh, there's like this small change that you can make that has this huge, huge impact and this positive impact. Is that something that you would expect help from your SEO experts with? 
Yeah, I think that would be super helpful on um, if we hear what the low hanging fruit is and we can t tell you if that is actually really simple and easy or not. <laughs> Um, so most of the time it is, it's like, oh, okay, I just need to like update, add, I just need to add like lazy loading for all the images, right? Um, that's really easy to do. That's, that's true. That's easy to do. Lazy loading is a perfect example of that. Yeah, we're trying to, to give guidance to SEOs in our documentation for like low hanging fruits, but it's tricky because low hanging fruits for one project and one tech stack might not necessarily be low hanging fruit for the others. So again, I think there needs to be a dialogue, right? I think it's perfectly fine if an SEO comes like, hey, this thing would have a, a big impact. How hard is it to do this? And then you are the experts on the engineering side, so you can evaluate if it's a low hanging fruit or not. So again, there needs to be a dialogue, I guess, right? Yeah, I also think that, um Though I don't know how, uh, if this is something that like every team can do, but I think it was really helpful that I was really excited about SEO. Um, I, I'm usually excited for SEO and accessibility. Yeah, so for because of that, I was almost like a liaison kind of thing of like being able to connect like, oh, all the, what are the SEO best, best practices and be able to um, translate it to the team and they'd be able to go to me. And since I already have like a strong relationship with my teammates, it was like uh, the trust was already there. Um, and then what they did afterwards was they actually added like an SEO expert within the team because we dealt with all the, uh, essentially all of our pages were pages that were searchable for Google. <laughs> so they're like, oh, you need a, like a kind of like an SEO expert. So they actually added an SEO member to our team. So like he was essentially our go-to person for, for questions. I think that's really, really cool. And I would love to see that more often because I think this liaison that you built and then the SEO expert in your team, that's a very, very essential thing. Um, and it, I think it requires to a certain degree. I'm not sure about your SEO expert that, that you got in your team. It is helpful if that person is at least technically inclined or has an interest in development and engineering. Um, I guess it works if they don't, but I don't know how it was in your case. Did they also know bits and pieces about development, not necessarily being a developer themselves? Uh, I don't think that he necessarily knew uh, pieces of development. It's kind of like a product manager. Like if it's a not like a non-technical product manager might not know uh, uh, all the technical aspects. They rely on us, but we'll say like, this is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> or this is why this like we need this and this is why this is important right and then it's the developer who pushes back saying i think this is going to be like a higher complexity or can we do it this way to achieve the same goal i see yeah so that's interesting because i always assumed that for this to work they have to have at least some technical knowledge but i I guess if you look at it from a like product manager's perspective, it doesn't have to be. It's perfectly fine if yeah, that's okay, that's interesting. That's really, really cool. That's really, really interesting. Um the the other thing that I was wondering is you said like, oh, it was interesting and it's like rewarding to me to see the impact of my work and like to to find out about these low-hanging fruits. So what you're saying is, just to make sure that I understood that correctly, what you're saying is developers generally are interested in the impact of their work in terms of SEO and like doing SEO work for the benefits that you can reap by doing it. Yeah, I, I'll do it based on essentially, I'm not going to generalize it, <laughs> but I'll say based on myself and my team and like the teams I've worked in in the past and currently actually is uh we are very invested in our users um we are user dr driven uh user centric um crazy about 
ha- like our users and wanting them to to get whatever need they or whatever like our goal is is be essentially is allow our users to easily use our our apps or our page what and like do the thing that they wanted to do on our site right and so essentially if that's not happening we're not doing a good job and we feel bad about it we're like oh we we want them to 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 access this this is important or like what what was the point um so it's important so i'm very result driven and i know like my team the teams i've been in have been result driven um and that's in a place of the love for the user that's a really nice oh yeah i i like that I like that statement. So I do hope that there's a lot more developers like you and your team who are doing it for the love of the user, which I think is the right attitude to things. And I think actually SEOs fundamentally are also doing it for the love of the user, except that they work towards or through a search engine, which I think we are doing it through front-end technology. So different means for the same end goal. So I think we share that end goal. And I, I would hope that we would connect more to reach this goal together. So yeah, let's hope that that uh, this series and these conversations do help to shape the path and more teams to be like this. Keeping fingers crossed. <laughs> awesome, excellent. Uh, Ruth, this has been really, really cool, really interesting. Um, I learned a bunch of new stuff, for instance, that uh, having a an SEO expert on your team, even if they don't uh, necessarily are uh, technical, uh, is, is super helpful and, and can help make these things more visible and like share, uh, share insights into what could be done to improve SEO and then leaving it to the engineering team to figure out how easy or how low hanging this specific thing is. Um, Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for being here. And thanks everyone who's watching the video out there. I do hope you got something out of it as well. And uh, see you soon for another episode. Bye-bye.